So yesterday I talked about uh, stepper motor driven stages and uh, I briefly mentioned um, uh, slipstick actuators in that video and I'd kind of moved on to those. So I thought it might be interesting just to talk a little bit about uh, these uh, uh, stick slip um, actuators. This one is called uh, a Pika motor and I picked this up for I think it was about $150 on eBay. Um, the drivers are also quite expensive, so you, you need a special driver um, to, to drive the uh, Pico motor. Um, now, what's known as slip stick actuators, um, and uh, they use the difference between uh, static and dynamic friction. Um, so, perhaps you might be able to see this on the display, a bit of luck. Um, yeah, so perhaps you can see here what the the motor is actually just a single piezo stack, which moves forwards and backwards, and that kind of uh, rubs against a, a a rod. This this pitch, uh, this this fine pitch uh, lead screw here, um, and that by by kind of uh, extending and compressing, it will cause uh, the lead screw to turn, um, but the trick it uses is if the lead, if the actuator extends very quickly, it doesn't cause much if any motion in the lead screw, and if it extend if it compresses slowly, it causes a lot of um, motion. And it's the same trick that's used for um, you know the trick with the uh, magicians do with a tablecloth when they pull a tablecloth quickly. Nothing on the table, all the plates and things under over the tablecloth uh, stay still. But if you were to pull the tablecloth slowly, the friction would drag everything with it. Um, so by using that difference between static and dynamic friction, it can pull the rod round. It, it can move slowly and drag the rod with it. And then when it resets itself, it goes very quickly to. Um, so and and doesn't cause any motion in the uh, the lead screw. Um, so that's basically how they work. I took some internal pictures um, of the uh, of the actuator I've been using, and her, and you know I'll link in these properly below. But you can see um, I'll say there's a better picture up here. You can see the lead screw, and then there's this um, uh, fixture that's just. Um, attached directly to the piezo stack, and then has a thread on it, uh, which which rubs against the uh, the lead screw. So it's a very neat, simple design, um, which gives like you know this incredible kind of precision. Um, I don't think they're not massively expensive new, but I think you know probably for a complete setup you're looking into the thousands of dollars. So it's always cheaper to pick these things up on eBay. Um, this uh, driver is a uh, Pika Motor 8701. Um, the co company that makes these actuators is called New Focus. Um, and they, they're kind of the big player in these slipstick um, uh, actuators. And you can also get them uh, from uh, PI. Um, they also do some uh, actuators that look really nice actually. And they do various other forms of uh, slick stick, uh, stick um, motors in different configurations. But it's one of the few kind of configurations that really gives you this high, almost kind of, um, well, not quite atomic, but uh, very high resolution motion over quite a long range of tra travel. So you, this, this is a 20 millimeter version, but you can get them... Um, even higher than that, uh, kind of 30, 40 millimeters easily, I think. And I don't think there's any real kind of limit. Um, so yeah, I got the whole thing working. Um, it uses this, the, uh, the driver uses this nasty D-type connector, um, which uh, requires uh, plus minus, plus 12, minus 12, and uh, five volts, and all the interfacing is, is five volts. It's very similar to how you would drive a stepper uh, for a driver, so there's a direction pin, and then there's just pulses to make the make the actuator rotate. 
and uh, give those come out on this 15-pin uh, uh, D-type uh, connector, which is also you know, it's a very common single connector. So, luckily, uh, these uh, these connectors are very common. The the picometer itself actually uses um, it's a bit like you know um, a telephone handset connector, but not quite, um, which is kind of an odd choice. Um, I th on my blog, I think I have some uh, captures of the waveforms as well, and it's really you know it's quite a simple waveform. All you get is um, basically it's 150 volts drive, um, and then you get a long pulse followed by a short pulse, or a short pulse followed by a long pulse depending on which direction you're going. So there's only ever one, you know, because it's, it's just a single stack, there's only one kind of signal that goes into the motor and then by changing the waveform you change the direction of motion, which is kind of cool I think. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at it going. This is just uh, driven off my um, power supply. Let's see if we can get it working. Uh, why isn't it working? Because the pin has come out. Okay, so I just have this kind of jammed in to the Arduino header. So as you can see, it's kind of rather noisy actually, um, but uh, this is moving a lot faster than you would typically have it, um, you know, if you're actually using it. Um, so this is moving, this is a thousand pulses a second. Um, uh, so it's quite a lot of motion, and generally, because you know you have such high resolution here, you'd maybe you'd move quickly to do your initial course approach, but then you'd only be probably moving single steps at a time and then doing some feedback when you've actually um, when you've actually kind of got down to near where you want to be. Uh, let's turn that off. Um, so while it sounds really noisy. Um, it actually electrically isn't doesn't produce a huge amount of noise when I'm when I'm when you actually send a pulse um, you can you can kind of see it you, you can see the um, the EMI interference on um, so you know obviously I'm doing like uh, nano nano amp uh, kind of current measurements in a SPM type system and you can see the noise from the device but when it's not moving the um, uh, it's not you know it's just DC uh, a DC drive voltage so that really doesn't cause any interference um, yeah so it's kind of cool I have had a quick look inside this thing but I'm not I haven't posted any pictures on the blog yet but I I think basically it is a switching design to get up to the 150 volts but it does seem quite low noise I haven't haven't seen it producing a huge amount of interference, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's basically the peak, uh, the Pico motor. Um, the stage it's on is is uh, as I said in the other video, this cheap uh, Chinese stage, which costs about hundred dollars, but it's a nice, they're really reasonably nice spring-loaded stages. Um, when you buy them, they come with a micrometer, but it's the exact the exact same um, uh, fitting as on the uh, as is required for the uh, Pico motor which is kind of cool so that's I think uh, everything I had to say um, it's quite efficient when I have it running it's consuming um, overall about three three watts so it's uh, 200 odd milliamp, uh, 200 odd milliamps on the 12 volt, almost nothing on the minus 12, and uh, about 80 on the uh, 5 volt line. So it's relatively efficient, um, and they're cool, high precision actuators.